Hi. Good morning. I hope you all slept well. Welcome to our course in titlers hashtag Estoiles of Liberty, Anglo-American Literature here at Burke Mountain Optional University. This English course covering the beginning of American literature to a little after the Hamiltonian era. Come along with us. Preface. From Thetford, Breckland. In Norfolk, England. The ideals of the enlightenment of human rights were all the talk about Western Europe and Thomas Paine wouldn't attempt to tame the fire from which enlightenment grew. Paine was an English-American, born on January 29th of 1736, a founding father of the nation whose position was assisted by publication of Common Sense in 1776 which changed the world. The pamphlet was most influential for the colonial proletariat who, removed from nobility and literate from the Industrial Revolution were enlightened. Nobility takes the second place to order where on the front lines between the law of man in conflict with the law of nature political ties are dissolved in lieu of survival. Colonists unrepresentatively taxed by the crown with natives all about were fighting a war on two fronts. As generations came and went, a growing body of native colonists who would never return from where their families had come settled out of court, and come what may, it did. Common sense would have the people of the land unite to create a more perfect union, establish justice, and etc., so we did. From Petford, Bragland, Norfolk, Payne would travel to the British colony of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia in 1774 persuaded by Benjamin Franklin who was in London opposed to the Stamp Act of 1765. A year flies by where before the revolution his widely read 47-page pamphlet helped culminate the zeitgeist of colonists and led to revolution. Wherever would we have went from there were it not for his next pamphlet The American Crisis, 1776-1783. Pamphlets number 213 were published in the Pennsylvania Journal from December 16th of 1776 by and 1777, while from 1778 to 1783 three more would be documented. Signed Common Sense as a pseudonym the revolutionary cause was recharged and the war waged on. Paine's liberal philosophy was written in language the common man could understand. In the midst of war all knew these are the times that try men's souls as his first volume so famously begins. As Paine proceeded to the Netherlands in 1781, providentialism was all the more a reality. Introduction. There are not many known born out of wedlock as influential in colonial times remembered today as Alexander Hamilton has been. Born in 1755, Hamilton was 21 when the United Colonies declared their independence from the United Kingdom, and fueled with the spirit of the Enlightenment national and individual providence in him was hard to distinguish. The Leeward Islands in the West Indies on the smaller, less populated southeastern island in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis whose motto of, country over self, meant more to some than others. Hamilton hails from St. Paul Charlestown Parish in the then island colony of Nevis whose centered volcano could erupt at any minute where God forbid an invasion as well. The neighboring island of St. Kitts, St. Christopher, across the Narrows having a larger population who'd either fled liquid hot magma flowing down Nevis Peak or actually narrowly escaped to neighboring St. Kitts. On a generally circular island with no more than a three-mile radius, the smallest island in its country, state in the Western Hemisphere and Federation in our world, had no feasible retreat were backed in a corner. Between the ocean's sharks, volcanoes magma, crops agriculture, 90% black population, native Caribs, and pirate invasions, English and French had to find each other amicable. Alexander, orphaned at 13, in St. Croix, he and his older brother James Jr. would last another year and a half together before Alexander was on his own. Luckily, Hamilton was taken in by a merchant named Thomas Stevens from Nevis whose motto of, country over self, he remembered still. Alexander's mother, Rachel Fawcett Lavien, and father James Hamilton Sr. crossed paths in time and space to produce one of the most brilliant minds of colonial and revolutionary America. As we can judge others right for all we see they do as good, but to rate another's mind there must be something to which we must compare if only ourselves. Tutored privately by a Jewish headmistress while young, Hamilton was fortunate having a 34-book library to supplement his education which subsequently led to a literary career that without, I couldn't say we'd be here today. At a young age he was a widely read pamphleteer for the cause of revolution. The perpetual union created by 13 colonies under the Articles of Confederation were outdated by 1786 during times of peace. Leading the Annapolis Convention September 11 to 14 of 1786 in Maryland Hamilton would write 51 of the 85 sections of the Federalist Papers helping to ratify the Constitution of the United States. The foundation of the Federalist Party in 1793 is thus a product of the Federalist Papers where of American political parties the Federalists were the first. The Jay Treaty of 1794 offered a platform where commerce between Great Britain and the U.S. could resume. Supporting economic growth and a nationally strong and uniform central government, speaking English, the preference of re-establishing trade relations with Britain to those with revolutionary France. From 1789 to 1801 the nationalist conservative Federalists controlled American politics until defeat in 1800. The Jeffersonian Democratic Republican Party would emerge where though then in the minority Federalists were strong in the nucleus of New England, remarking opposed to the War of 1812. By June of 1784 the Treaty of Paris had not yet ended the war formally, but the Senate continued legislation, what was owed rose and the economy needed to be addressed further yet again. 
The Bank of North America chartered by the Continental Congress in 1781 was the first in the U.S. was established in Philadelphia including Hamilton, Jefferson, and Franklin. The second bank in the U.S. founded in 1784 was the Massachusetts Bank chartered in Boston. The damage by then had, however, already been addressed by Hamilton where though Washington was first elected president 13 years after the declaration, the Bank of New York from which one would be so nationally. By 1789 Hamilton had proven himself as militarily effective as he was literally revolutionary in economics where becoming the first secretary of the treasury fit him well. The point is that Hamilton took the liberty to write the Federalist Papers which helped project his thoughts so that others could see the beauty of him mind. Country over self, remembered, we remember, and distinguish Alexander from other Hamiltons in the universe because of what he wrote for US. That concludes the information we have for you this session. If you have time replay this module for clarification. Thank you for your time and attention.